What's going on, everybody? Happy Midday Monday to you. Pray that all is well with you. You all are having a God-blessed Monday afternoon. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice. I choose to rejoice. I make the decision to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Favor is back in the saddle again on another Monday midday. Wishing you all a great day. I hope you all are having a blessed, safe, successful, and productive day. Pray that you all had a wonderful weekend this past weekend. And those of you that attended uh, worship services on yesterday, I pray that God met you all in a powerful, powerful way. And we give God glory for how he met us there at the temple on yesterday. Blessed us with his presence, blessed us, hallelujah, ministering to us, and blessed us with his word, most importantly. Everything else is going down, but the word of God. So we're grateful to the Lord for that. Hey, listen, guys, um, I, I wanted to come on here and jump on right quick. I came back here at the office. I'm about to go back out. Got a lot to do, got a lot to take care of, got a lot to get done. But uh, listen, guys, I always want to take a moment to hang out with you guys for the Midday Monday Nugget and those who come back and support AGA on Monday nights at 7 p.m. for Back to the Bible. I'm telling you guys, we are doing uh, and enjoying ourselves as it relates to a lot of the stuff that's going on and what we're dealing with, dealing with the issues in the music ministry. And I'm telling you guys, it is really being a blessing to so many lives. And a lot of people are really um, appreciating the truth concerning a lot of the things that are going on. I shared a testimonial with you guys on last Monday night uh, from a musician. And uh, I, I caused him to remain anonymous. I didn't want to uh, call his name or whatever. He wanted to remain in confidence, but he wanted my uh, wanted me to share his testimony. And I shared it with you guys. And many of you were blessed by the testimony, a lot of the things that he shared that is going on behind the scenes. So it is not designed to you know, belittle anybody, to bash anybody, but it's designed to wake us up and to get us back on track and to get our minds and our focus back where it belongs, okay? So that we can um, use the gifts and the callings and the talents that God has given us to bring him the glory and all the honor, all right? So that it can edify the body of Christ, okay? So that other people can be blessed, so that their lives can be changed and so much can take place in a positive way that we can see and make a difference. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get right to the nugget today. It's going to be a get right to the point. Um, because again, I got a lot I got to do. It's some, sometimes you got more to do and the amount of time you got in the day. And then when you get busy doing stuff, time fly by so fast. But uh, before you know it, it's evening time. Time to bring it in, lay it down, get ready for another day. But uh, thank God for that. Good evening to you, uh, Sister Keisha Hodges. What's going on? DTWC Georgia's own. What's happening, Sister Keisha? Pray that all is well. God bless you on this Monday afternoon. And everybody is doing great. Let's continue to pray for all the states that was hit by the storms. We endured a lot of rain, flooding, all of that kind of stuff. Power outages, trees falling down. I know in my neighborhood, we had a lot of trees fall down and block a lot of the roads and it was just a lot, but the crews and whatnot that they had uh, within the city, they was able to um, get a lot of stuff removed so people could travel, get in and out. And so that's a great thing, guys. So let's continue to remember everybody that has been uh, affected by these storms and hurricanes and things like that. And um, if you're able to be a blessing, to people, please do so. Amen. If you know somebody needs something, uh, uh, supplies or food or clothing or anything like that, please, please, please help a per person out, help people out, help these families out because they got to go through this process of recovery and rebuilding. And uh, so do what you can, guys. Do what you can. That's one of the things that I shared with our church on yesterday. Uh, one of the reasons why our church is so blessed, because we always giving, we always supporting others that are in need. Amen. That's our job as the church, the body of Christ. 
and we ought to be a blessing to so many people. And so we thank the Lord for all that he has done and how he has blessed us. And we know that it is nobody but the Lord. Amen. And it's good to be able to be in a position where you can bless others and not always have to be in need. Uh, yes, I am doing well, Sister Keisha. God bless you. I am doing absolutely well. All right, guys, I'm going to get to the nugget because I got to go. But the nugget is simply this. Cycles, cycles become a circle until you break it. A lot of times we repeat cycles, right? And within that cycle, those cycles continue. And as long as those cycles continue, it'll cause us to begin to go around in circles. So cycles can become a circle until you break it, okay? And if you feel that you are going around in circles, you seem like you, it seems like you're making progress and then you turn around and look up, it's like you not making any progress. It's like, it's like, man, I tried this, I tried that. It's always something, it's always something, it's always something. You know, you have to, you have to uh, break that cycle. You can't keep going around in cycles. You can't keep repeating cycles and not expect it to turn into a circle, causing you to go around in circles. So the only way that you can break those cycles and keep it from causing you to go around in a circle, you got to you got to break that cycle. You got to you got to make some changes. You got to you got to do something different. You got to make some adjustments, okay? And, and, and this is what we got to do a lot of times in business. We got to make some adjustments. We got to we got to break some cycles. You got to change your mind. I tell people all the time, your mindset has a lot to do with your attitude as it relates to how you deal and handle situations and circumstances. I, like I shared with you all on, on last Monday, things are going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Things are going to happen. So but you, you, you but you got to change your mindset. You got to change the way you think so that it can cause you to have a different attitude, which causes you to have a different approach. A lot of times we get frustrated, we get upset, we get angry, we get mad over something that is a part of life. It's a part of the process. It's a part of being in business. You understand what I'm saying? And, and what, what happens is if you if you getting upset over the small things, then when something major happens, it's going to take you out. You understand what I'm saying? The whole purpose of being in business is your, your, your purpose of business is to uh, be a solution to other people's problems. Okay. But if you, if you, if you can't handle your own, then how you expect to be successful in business, because that's all business is. Business is a solution for people's problems. It is an answer for people's questions or whatever the case may be. We are in business to meet somebody's need. Okay. So you have to change your, your mindset and you got to change your attitude as it relates to why you in business. Why are you in business? Now, if you're in business because of the money, then that would explain your attitude. That would explain the way you think because it's all about you. You are in business from a selfish perspective. How is it going to better me, benefit me? No, you got to change your mindset. You got to change your attitude. God blessed me to be in this position so that I can be a solution to somebody else, so that I can be an answer to somebody else's prayers or uh, somebody has a need. And this is what I do. I'm in business to meet that particular need. And so when you change your mindset, you change your attitude. And when you change your attitude, you change your approach. And once you change your approach, that's when God sees that your heart is in the right place. Now he can bless you. He can trust you. And the cycle breaks. OK, but if you always constantly, constantly, constantly repeating the same cycle, that cycle is going to cause you to begin to go in a circle. And when you begin to go in a circle, then that's when the frustration, that's when all of that stuff takes place. You don't want that, guys. You want to be able, again, if you, if, if business is geared 
to be a solution to other people's problems and it is and you can't handle your own problems then it's going to spill over it's going to affect you as it relates to your service and how you offer service in your business uh so you know you got to change your attitude guys attitude is key okay what kind of attitude do you have as it relates to your business okay because people going to pick up on your attitude. You know, you can sell, you can sell your service, but people are picking up on your attitude. It is your presentation, guys. It is your presentation that determines whether the customer chooses to use you as a, a, a solution and an answer or a service. Good evening to you, uh, Pastor Derek Mary. Good evening to you. God bless you. Happy Midday Monday to you. Good evening to you. Lord, I ain't got my glasses. Good evening to you, Brother Brian Barr. God bless you, Brian. Thank God you're being helped, man. Uh, good evening to everybody that's coming in. I can't really see everybody that's coming in, but uh, uh, man, I ain't got my glasses. Boy, woo-wee. But um, so we got to change our attitude, guys. And I see it so much. I see it so much. A lot of guys... You know, they, they, they so, they so quick to, to, um, feel, feel like they, they not doing something right. No, guys. No, 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 no. You could be doing something right. You could be following the formula. You can be following the steps, but it's all in your attitude. And a lot of times we got to be patient. We got to understand that there are up and down seasons. There are up and down uh, moments. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have some good seasons. You're going to have some slow seasons. So you got to be able to navigate. You got to be able to make the right decision. You got to, but you can't make a decision um, when you don't, you don't have a level head. Many of you, you know what I mean when I say that, you know what I'm saying? You got to have a level head. You got to have a level head. You can't be so quick to get upset. You can't be so quick to get emotional as it relates to things that that's going to happen anyway. And, and, and I asked the question, you know, when you get upset, what is that fixing? What is that doing? Do you understand what I'm saying? And what it does is it pushes you more in the direction of quitting. When you get upset, you get uh, uh, frustrated and you allow your emotions to govern you and to guide you. What that does when something happens or takes place, it, it, it tend to push you more to the direction of I quit or it, it pushes you more to the direction of, man, is this even worth my time? Is this even worth my energy or whatever the case may be? Man, you know what, man? I'm out. I'm done. See, that's what that that's what that does. It pushes you to that to that limit. Right. But if you learn how to change the way you think and if you learn because the way you think has a lot to do with your attitude and your attitude got everything to do with your approach. OK, good evening to you, brother Lamar. God bless you. Pray that all is well with you. And everybody's doing well. So you got to, you, ladies and gentlemen, you got to change the way you think. You got to change the way you think. And if you don't change the way you think, you're going to have a negative attitude. And if you have a negative attitude, negative attitude, you, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to not be able to give it time. So see, that's what, that's what patience comes in, right? You got to give it time. I got a project that I've been waiting on. And I've been working on, okay? Let me just share this with you guys. I got a project that I've been working on for the last three months, three and a half months. Well, to logically, you know, logically, if you were looking at it from a logic perspective, it should have been, it should have been done. But from a, from a patient's perspective, Yes, Lord. From a logic perspective, man, that should have been done. But from a patient perspective, there were some things that happened in the process of getting this project done. So it caused it to be delayed. Now, had I lacked patience, I would have got in my feelings and I would have allowed my feelings to cause me to make a move that would have changed and altered the whole process. 
Okay. Now I could have, I could have went another direction, but I still wouldn't have gotten the, the right results. Okay. So I had to be patient and I could not allow my emotions and my feelings to govern my, my decisions. So I decided to wait. I decided to be patient and I decided to let the process work itself out. Well, in the process of that, I got a phone call on Friday and what the project I've been waiting on is going to be completed. It's, it's scheduled to be completed this week. Okay. So guess what? I'm getting results, but I had to be patient and I had to wait. Now, had I listened, had I listened to my feelings and had I listened to my emotions, I would have made another move that would have cost me more. And it would have, it would have been, it would have been, it would have been another delay because you don't know what the situation would be somewhere else. Cause the grass always looked greener on the other side. You understand what I'm saying? The grass always looked green on the other side. You don't have to always move to the other side looking for greener grass. Just treat the grass you got. Water it. Put some fertilizer on it. Treat it. You 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 got grass. You already got grass. So 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 you're going to leave where grass is to go where grass looks to be because it looks greener. It looks greener. Grass is grass. Y'all ain't saying that, but it's all in how you take care of it. It's all in how you treat it. It's all in, 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 in what you have to do to cause it to look the way you want it to look. So why are you doing all this moving? Why are you doing all this shifting? Why are you making all these changes when all you got to do is work with what you got? Why are you allowing what you see over there to discourage you where you are over here? Hey, Amen. See, you got to learn how to be thankful. And you got to learn how to be grateful and you got to be appreciative and you got to learn how to work with what you got until you can get to where you desire to be. It's too many people operating out of ambition. You don't have, you don't have enough patience. Sometimes, sometimes you can have ambition to do a thing, but you don't, you don't have and possess the patience to do it. So don't allow ambition to trick you and to deceive you into thinking that you can do and handle something that you can't handle because you lack the patience to do it. See, some stuff looks like it can be done. Some stuff look like it's easier. Some stuff look better. But if you don't have the patience for that, see, anything you have, you got to have patience for it. You can't, you can't, you can't maintain anything out of ambition. Ambition is like feelings, emotions. They change. <laughs> they don't stay the same. You're up one minute. You're happy one minute. You're, you're in one minute. You're out the next. You're up. You're down. You're 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 in the mood. You're not in the mood. It, it it's all it all depends. You don't want to you don't want to operate and you don't want to make moves and make decisions out of ambition. You want to be patient so that you can count up the cost. So you can weigh this thing, but like, wait a minute now. Now, okay, if I go this route, run the numbers, run the numbers. Hey man, this is what I want. And see, a lot of times we can have a long list of wants, but you got to count up the costs. You understand what I'm saying? Prioritize. You got to get your mindset right. There it is again. It goes back to the way you think. You got to prioritize. You got to get your, you got to get your thinking right. You understand what I'm saying? Because your thinking, your thinking affects your attitude and your attitude affects your approach. OK, how you approach something is a reflection of your attitude and the way you think about it. How you think about something, how you think about a person, it will affect your attitude towards them and it will affect how you approach them and how you interact with them. That, that, that's, that's, that's dealing with people and that's dealing with situations. So things are going to happen, guys. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Things are going to happen. But in order to break, in order to, in order to not walk around in circles, you got to break the cycles. Because if you don't break the cycles, 
cycles leads to circles. So if you don't break cycles, those cycles are going to begin to cause you to go around in circles. Okay. And the only way that you can get out of that circle and stop going around in circles is you got to break the cycle. That's all I'm saying, guys. Break the cycle. Break the cycle and you'll stop going around in circles. All right. Change the way you think that will cause your attitude to change and your approach to change. All right. Hang in there, guys. Keep working. Keep making sacrifices. Keep making the right investments. You understand what I'm saying? Be patient. Things ain't things don't always happen the way we would like. Things don't always come together the way we plan. That's why you got to plan to be patient. Amen. While you're making plans, be sure to include patience in the plan. <laughs> All right. Put some patience in the plan. That way, if things may not turn out, if it may be a delay, it may be a hiccup in the plan, don't worry about it. I've already packed some patience. I got some patience packed in here. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm a little bit more understanding. I'm a little, I'm a little bit more, uh, 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 I'm a little bit more understanding about the situation. Okay. We ran into a hiccup. All right. Uh, we, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't anticipate this, but it, here it is. This is what we got. We got to deal with it. We got to face it. I put some patience in the bag. You understand? I pack patience just in case. Always listen, preparation. Preparation, guys. Preparation is preparing for something just in case. Just in case I got this. Just in case I got a I got a spare tire. Just in case I got a jack. Just in case I got a flashlight. Just in case I got some extra batteries and some fuses. That doesn't mean I need it now, but it's best to have it for later and then to need it later and don't have it, okay? Sometimes you got to pack for later. You got to pack, okay? Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. That's fine. You can hope for the best. You can prepare for the best. I shared this with one of uh, one of our members uh, uh, um, today. Uh, I, I talked to them on, by phone. And, 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 um, I told them, I said, you know, a lot of times we plan for the best, but we don't plan for the worst. And a lot of times when things don't go according to plan, we panic, we worry, we get afraid, we get frustrated, we get angry. Why? Because we didn't prepare for both sides because anything can happen. Now, when I say the worst, that don't mean that, you know, you, you, you know, we got to get out of this mindset of everything is going to be positive. No, 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 no. Life is not made like that. That's just like if you pop the hood on your car and you move, pull that hood up, there is a positive side of your battery and then there's a negative side of your battery. OK, and, and your negative side is the ground wire. I don't care how much how much your battery is charged. On the positive side, if you don't have a good ground that is grounded on the negative side, your car won't start. Hallelujah to God. So all of this, all of this stuff about you got this thought about negativity. No, no, negativity is necessary. You just got to change your perspective and the way you think about it. Y'all ain't saying that. And that way, negativity would not work against you, but negativity will begin to work for you by working with you. So you got to change the way you think. See, if you change the way you think, a lot of stuff can work for you. <laughs> if you change your attitude, a lot of stuff can be in your best interest. But uh oh, yeah, uh oh, wait a minute. So, but, but uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> you gotta change the way you think, huh? Yes, sir. You see that, that, that negativity helps, helps, helps you be balanced. See, you get some balance out of that. Y'all ain't saying that. If, if everybody's speaking well of you, the Bible said be aware. Be aware when men speak well of you all the time. You every now and then you need somebody not to have nothing good to say so that it can keep your balance so they can keep you a base. That's what keeps you on your knees. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. That's what that's what causes you to be rooted and stable and, and 
and all of that. You understand? No, man, change your attitude. Change your attitude about all of that, okay? And so um, I pray that you all enjoy the nugget, guys. The boy got to get out of here. But it's been a blessing and a pleasure to share the Midday Monday Nugget with you. Come back tonight, hang out with AGA, 7 p.m. We're still dealing with that um, that beautiful segment, man. We're having a great time. Man, so many people are being blessed by that thing. But come on back, hang out with AGA. But this is Mr. Favor, and I was... I was blessed. I'm honored to share the nugget with you guys. I pray that y'all was blessed by the nugget. Please, 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 please hang in there, guys. Keep working at it. Don't give up. All right. Keep on doing the right thing. Keep on making it happen. Keep on making that sacrifice, man. Keep on, keep on, keep on. Keep working, guys. Payday, payday, payday is coming after a while. And when I say payday, I don't just mean payday as it relates to money. It's nothing better than to look back and see and, and see the success and the growth and the development of and, and the fruit of your labor. I'm telling you guys, when you can look back and you can see all the hard work and all the sacrifices and all the investments and all the time that you put in and the work and all, and you can see the growth and, and the expansion and the influence and the effects on the business or whatever the case may be, you do ministry or whatever. When you can look and just listen and hear somebody talk about the experience and how they appreciate the work and the service that you do. That means a lot, guys. That means so much. And that's how you know. That's the confirmation that you are operating and doing what you are called and assigned to do in the field and in the work that you're in, okay? That's your confirmation, guys. When people call you back, that's your confirmation that you're doing something right. When somebody is calling you on the phone and say, hey, can I use your service again? Hey, do you have time to do this? Hey, do you have time to do that? All right, that's your confirmation, guys, when you're doing something right, okay? So hang in there, guys. Be encouraged, man. Hope you all was blessed by this nugget. Again, uh, as I often say to the Monday night crew, y'all be sober out there. Be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, is walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But we choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High so we can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hey, listen, guys, I want you to know that I love you and I'm praying for you till we meet again. Break the cycle so you can quit going around in circles. Be productive. Make some changes. Do what you got to do. But, for, but, but at the end of the day, in all that you do, don't quit. Keep on going, guys. Hang in there. The race ain't given to the swift, neither is the battle to the strong. But the he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. This is Mr. Favor. I'm out of here. Peace.